Okay, this video is going to show how to set Kodi up on RetroPie 3.3.1. Hopefully uh, it'll probably work in this sort of manner for a few RetroPie versions to come, but that's the version I'm using, 3.3.1, which came out about late December 2015. So this is just written the image to the SD card, put in my Raspberry Pi, and boot it up for the first time. So I just walk through the whole process. And I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, and plugged in, I've got a mouse, a keyboard, and a joypad. So as I've booted up, it's detected my joypad and wants me to configure it. So this isn't really part of the Kodi install per se, it's just the process that happens. So as I press the button on the joypad, you'll see at the bottom, it's detected it. And if I hold it down, it'll let me configure it. So we'll do that so we can navigate in the emulation station interface. Okay. So now I just press the buttons that it prompts me for. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left bottom and right bottom. Now I'm using an iBuffalo USB joypad. Um, vast majority of joypads will work here. And what this process does is configure it to work in emulation station, but also configure it to work with RetroArch based um, emulation as well. So some of the buttons it prompts me for, um, because it doesn't know uh, whether the controller I've got has necessarily got these buttons, it's going to ask me anyway. But you can skip them, you just hold down the button that you've previously pressed. So I'm just tapping that, and it says not defined. So I just work through the buttons I haven't got um, by doing that. Because all I'm interested in at the moment for this video is getting emulation station working so we can configure Kodi. For those of you who've used the um, Kodi package previously. Um, you might be more familiar with its older name, XBMC, but I think it's been around long enough now that everybody knows it as Kodi. Okay, so when you finish that, it goes to the OK button, and I'm going to press the button that I've mapped to A when it asked me earlier just to hit OK. And you just wait a second, and it goes into the emulation station interface. So, like I say, I'm using RetroPie 3.3.1. Um, written the image to the SD card, and this is the first boot up. So these are the systems with files already in them. And what we're going to do, we're going to go into the RetroPie menu because the first thing that quite often you ever want to do is always expand the SD card because when you write the image, it's only aware of the size that the image was. So we need to say we want to use all of the SD card. It's not strictly needed for the installation of Kodi, but it's quite a sensible step. So in here, I'm going to scroll down using my joypad to the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, Raspberry Config. Click that and it'll fire it up. Now you can do this from the command line interface instead, but this is, I guess, more intuitive. It's a lot easier, possibly, so you don't have to worry about um, using the, the command line interface directly. Okay, so now whilst we're here, quite often I would go into number seven there and choose an overclock, but that's up to you. It's the stock, um, the stock power should be fine on the Raspberry Pi 2 for this um, Kodi purpose. So what we're going to do, is expand the file system. Now I've selected number one with the joypad and if I press right it goes to the select button and then I tap A on the joypad or the button I've mapped to A. No, ignore that. B, try B. There we go. And it's done it. It's resized the card but that doesn't kick in until you restart. So I'll hit OK there with B and press right and right again to finish and it says would you like to reboot now and you may as well. Now, I'm going to pause the video uh, because it just lose it, basically. But um, I'll uh, fire it back up when it's uh, restarted. But yeah, just reboot um, now. OK, we're back in RetroPie. And we've just rebooted after expanding the disk space. So there's no problem with getting extra files on the Pi, whether you want to put local media on there or any other extra files like the games. Um, you might want to use the keyboard as well in this interface. So rather than have to use the joypad, you can use the, the keyboard just as easily. And if you want to add that, you can just do it by pressing start on the um, keyboard, or, sorry, start on the joypad. Or when we added the joypad earlier, you can press a key on the keyboard and configure it in the same way. But if you wanted to do it now, you just press start like this, choose configure input. And it says, although only one gamepad detected, if I hold a key on the keyboard, you'll see it sort of detect it and pop up. There at the bottom there, it sort of says keyboard. And if I kept my finger held down, it would configure the keyboard. So you can use the keyboard as well. Okay, so I'm going to escape out of that. Because um, obviously you don't need to do it, you can just use the, the joypad. Now what we're going to do is install Kodi. 
and we don't need to drop into the um, command line interface either to do that we can use, still install it using this interface so that's what we'll do we go to the RetroPie menu again and in there this time we choose down the bottom RetroPie setup that's where we're going to install Kodi because by default it's not installed um, with the card when you write the image you've got to choose to install it because it's still in the experimental mode or at least it is in 3.3.1 and experimental doesn't mean it's uh, sort of not necessarily working it just means that uh, at the moment there might be some issues with compatibility working with RetroPie and and it wants to be more testing but uh, by and large it works pretty well so if we go to RetroPie setup there we get the menu and you, you've probably seen this menu before but uh, you can access it in this interface obviously and number three no sorry we go number four experimental and in number four you can see if we scroll down there's Kodi here so open source uh, theater, home theater software and I'm gonna hit OK now you do need before you do this you do need to have an internet connection because it's going to download files so please make sure that it's either connected by Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable um, so it's got access to install the files. I'm going to hit OK. I clicked uh, A on the joypad there. And you can see now it's just basically going to go and download the files, expand them, install them, put them in the right place. This will take about five minutes or so. So I'll just, again, I'll pause the video and then fire it up when it's finished doing this. Okay, that's done. It didn't take five minutes. It barely took, I don't know, even two minutes. So it returns you to this screen here. Um, that's completed now. This is where it returns you to as soon as it's finished. And to quit out of this, back to the emulation station interface, if you just press um, right and hit cancel, um, click A on the joypad, and again, cancel again. And this just goes back into that interface we were in a minute ago. And that, you could stop there. You've installed it but obviously you want to run it as well. Now, if I press B to get back to the main menu, you'll find that under the ports menu here, you'll get a listing that says Kodi. Now, we don't at the moment because we haven't restarted Emulation Station, so it hasn't reread that file that's needed. And to do that, all you do now is press Start and Quit and choose Quit Emulation Station. And when we do this, there'll be an option to stay quit at the command line interface or just do nothing and it'll automatically restart. And that's what you've got to do. So don't press anything on the keyboard, just press quit like this, really quick, yes. And it says there, press a button, otherwise in five seconds it's gonna restart, which is fine. That's what we want it to do. And back in the emulation station, emulation station interface, we go to RetroPie, uh, no we don't, we go to ports and you've got the Kodi option. Okay, so to run it, just select that. Now, I think I said earlier, in my Pi I've got three USB um, connections. I've got a joypad plugged in, I've got a keyboard, and I've got a mouse. So select Kodi. And there you go, we've got Kodi on the RetroPie setup. Now, there are a few differences between running it on the RetroPie configuration and just running it clean if you like. So one for example is, well you, actually at the bottom right here you can see that because I've got an internet connection it's running through um, some add-ons and just uh, setting them up properly. So again it does, whilst it isn't required, it does help to have an internet connection when you run Kodi, so if you want to stream uh, YouTube videos or something like that, but you could just use it for local media. Now uh, some of the options here the first one says um, one of the add-ons incompatible, so we need to in, um, interact with the interface to start setting it up a bit more precisely. But for various reasons, the um, remote control on your TV, which I think uses um, the HDMI protocol CEC that could often control Kodi, won't work in the way that it's set up on the RetroPie install, and joypads won't work either. Now. There might be a way to get those working, but the last time I read the thread, there's a lot of configuration required with slightly different versions of Kodi. So it does seem to be pretty difficult to get those interfaces working. Whereas 
in this example as you'll see keyboard and mouse just work straight away no problems at all but if you want your joypad or um, remote control for the TV to work you're probably better off just getting an SD card that runs Kodi. Now if you um, Google some threads on Kodi and RetroPie you'll probably see references to Triple Play where it's got three different applications running all at once and you know there are various ways to um, look at this with different versions of Kodi but I this is really just to get Kodi up and running working with RetroPie so you can easily access Kodi, quit Kodi, go back into the RetroPie interface, play some games, go back into Kodi but the um, trade-off does seem to be it's keyboard and mouse, not controller. I'll just check on my um, TV controller. Yeah, I'm not getting any feedback from the TV controller either at the moment. And there is, I'll link to some forums uh, posts so you can see the technical detail about that. But the upshot is keyboard and mouse. Right, so I'm going to go with my mouse. You can see that cursor is quite happily moving. Or I could use the keyboard and you can see there, again, quite happy. So um, this particular add-on it's been marked as broken in the repository do you want to disable it yeah that's fine i'm sure that'd be fine okay you can see in the corner it's still updating a few extra add-on modules but now really you've got the kodi interface and um if you're familiar with kodi you're away that's pretty much all there is to set it up um, it's integrated quite nicely now with retropie and it plays ball really well um, now it does mention this that the the version that you've got on retropy 3.3.1 is Kodi 14.2 whereas 15.2 is available that's fine but there's not necessarily a whole swathe of extra features you haven't got in 14.2 and I'm sure in future versions no doubt when it's appropriate the um, updated version of Kodi will be available in retropy but I wouldn't worry too much that um, there isn't the absolute latest so click OK there you can see if I just scroll to the right in the system, system info gives a quick breakdown of what I've got. So free memory, my IP address, screen res, shows me storage details, network details, which is quite useful if you need to um, hook up remotely with uh, the RetroPie, video details, etc, etc. So yeah, you can see that sort of breakdown, but you don't need any of that. All you want to really do maybe on KD is run a couple of videos. So under videos, same with pictures and music really, you've got an option to look at files or have a look at some add-ons. So if we just look at files first, click that, that's just giving you some help tips, okay. And we can add video add-ons or look at files. So we go for files and I want to add some videos and if I click browse, I've got all of these options to communicate with um, different file systems and access my videos that I might have on a USB stick. If you put a USB stick in the Pi, it would appear as one of these items here, it's a USB and let you browse. Or you can connect to your NAS, or you can look at local file systems. So if you went um, root file system, you could just put some files on the Pi itself and then run them from here. Um, so there's a few different ways of accessing uh, the folders. If I do my example, I've got a UPnP device on my network with some uh, video files. So if I put UPnP and that's it there, and I know that um, I want some videos and the folder structures, folders, video, and let's say TV, then I just hit OK. So you don't hit the actual media file at this point, you just um, put the directory that you want to have as a source. Now, again, this video I'm making is more turning into how to use Kodi rather than getting it running with RetroPie, but just as a quick brief um, overview. That's what I've done. I hit OK, and it appears now, my the folder that I've selected appears there. If I go up a directory, I can also do a video add-on, get more. Again, obviously you'll need internet access. And if we scroll down here, you've got all the default ones, and you can also browse for specific ones, but again, that's more a Kodi tutorial. Uh, if we go for YouTube, I can say to that and click install. Okay, I just missed it there. There we go. Okay, downloading 76%. Like I say, you need an internet connection enabled. That's done. So from here, if I click the home button down there and videos. I can now either look at the add-ons or look at the file system. So if we do the add-ons first, 
we've, it's got YouTube that we just installed. Click YouTube and execute setup wizard. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll show you by default thumbnail, um, episodes thumbnail, language and region, no, it's fine. And let's search on YouTube. And then using the keyboard, um, if I search for some videos, uh, some of mine should pop up. There we go. Um, let's try this one. So single click that. As it starts streaming that. There we go. That's uh, showing OK. If I jump ahead with the mouse. There we go streams quite happily and you know obviously you could do that with any YouTube video so it's quite quick and easy to set up uh, using the RetroPie. I'll quit out of this with stop and I'll try the, uh, if I hit home again or back down here and um, back again if I go upper directory here I'll just choose the files that we added a moment ago which are on my NAS um, let's try Okay, so that's just over my local network. And that's uh, streaming TV programs, okay. So we quit out of that, we stop, and you get the idea. So from this point, like I say, it's really just using Kodi rather than integrating it with um, the RetroPie setup. But once you're done there, um, you can use the keyboard or mouse to quit out of it using this button down here. If I press that, and I just want to exit uh, Kodi rather than reboot or anything else. And we should see that we get back to Emulation Station, at which point you can play uh, your next retro game. Okay, I think uh, the connection had a moment there, but it should quit out of this back into RetroPie um, without any problem. I'll try that again now. So quit here, and then I just want to exit Cody. Click there, and it brings us back into Emulation Station. And then you've got control with your joypad back as normal. Uh, if you've got any questions, please put them in the uh, comments. If this was useful, uh, please click the thumbs up. And if you've got uh, specific Kodi questions, best off in the Kodi forum, or if there's in-depth RetroPie configuration queries, go to the RetroPie forums, and I'm sure people will help you out there. Okay, thanks.